Shirt Show. All right, let's go. Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Shirt Show! All right! Episode 202 of Shirt Show! We're talking with Drew from West Cliff Inc. in California. Let's go! Hey there, cutie pie. Hey, man. How's it going? That's going. Yeah. 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 Well, tell me all about it. Tell me about your uh, your little trippy trip. Oh well, um, yeah, that thing. So I went to ThreadX. And... I think we need a little bit of the backstory, though. What's the backstory? You getting last minute tickets? I did. Yeah. Thank you, DGI. So, yeah, DGI had something come up and uh, I got a phone call from Ian and on like a Thursday night and said, hey, do you want my tickets? And I took them. And so, yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let me just tell you that Salt Lake City is beautiful. It's Salt the Lake Salt Lake City Airport is beautiful. Utah is beautiful. Sundance is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Brett and Ryan and Tom, they're all beautiful. Um, Mid-level. The, this, uh, 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 Guy Raz is beautiful. It's all beautiful, man. All mm-hmm. beautiful. So it, what was kind of weird, though, is I went back in winter. You know, like finally spring happened in St. Louis. Great weather. And then I flew to winter. It was snowing. But look, it was beautiful. But you went to a place that's meant to look majestic when it's snowy. It's not like St. Louis in the snow. That's a good, good point. Right. You went to Narnia. You're right. So it actually probably was better that way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was (laughs) actually better. Just a little chilly. And um, it's weird, you know, I haven't been in elevation for a while. And so walking around, you kind of, you know, it's you got to catch your breath, which was high. You do a little bit, literally. Because you're in your elevation. Yeah. Yeah. Um. You know, but hung out with some friends, uh, had some good food, had some good times. Solid. Solid. All in all, what were your takeaways? You know, it all happened so fast. I would say that, oh, shoot, I was going to have like a breakdown of like the first guy because this dude had it all. His name was Max and it was Maximum uh, Info. Max. Yeah. Maximum yeah. Max. Yeah, dude. Um, it was amazing. He broke down sort of the economic data that we all see every day and sort of scratch our heads and wonder what it all means necessarily. And he, um, I don't know, he just went, went, uh, for like 45 minutes. And I was like, afterwards said, that was awesome. And that's what you want. You want that from that kind of thing. Yeah. If I just hadn't forgot it all, like that'd be cool. (laughs) So totally, (laughs) totally useless. (laughs) No, it's up there somewhere. Um, And just the overall sentiment was that the economy is better than you think. So, so yeah, so that was good. And then, um, you know, just, you know how it goes. You've been to these events where there's speakers Mm -hmm. and they, they kind of go through them and you take, uh, there's takeaways, little takeaways from each one. And so Mm -hmm. that's sort of how, how it went. And then the, the headliner put on a, they put on a good event. Always like, that's just the thing is that, I think I've said this before, Brett could just be an event planner, honestly, mm-hmm. you know, like he's great screen printer, great shop owner, all that sort of stuff, but mm-hmm. he might be the best event planner, you know? I just picture when you say event planner, I'm like walking like around with like thin glasses <laughs> and like a clipboard he's and like, an earpiece. And he's like yelling at people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, in fact, he really didn't do, you know, like he, a lot of times there's, he was the MC, like at his events that he hasn't made yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. He wasn't that. So he was behind the scenes more this time. Everyone was, Ryan. He got to, he got to enjoy. Like, That's nice. Yeah. Including Ryan. Yeah. He got, well, I don't know if he truly got to enjoy it. It's sort of like when you have a party at your house and you yeah. know, you've, you've have all these plans and people are over there and you're still trying to make it all happen. It's um, it's a little stressful. You know how, in fact, we're getting ready to do that next week, right? I know. I can't. Speaking I keep forgetting it next of, week. Speaking of, look what I have right here. A little sample of some squeegees. Ooh, orange, too. 
They are orange squeegees, 6090-60s, triple duro. Um, and why I have these and why didn't Frank just keep them and then drive over to Roselle with them is because Joanne is doing some special art on each oh, one of these. Yeah. It's going to have FFFFF rank and then shirt show and then a little picture. And then you get the squeegee to take home with you to your shop, right. put in a, um, what's it called? Clamp. And thingy. Joanne's a legit fucking artist too. So like you could just not print with it and hang it on your wall. It's worth millions. I actually, I, I don't think you should. Yeah. You're probably right. Don't use this. This is just for yeah. a keepsake. No, nah, that's the wrong word. This is a art piece. She needs to sign them all. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. She will. I mean, it's, 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 that's what the worth is at. Yeah. That signature. I asked her two days ago or something like that. I was, hey, can you, if I have Frank shit the shit, <laughs> ship those down to me, <laughs> can you give us all special art? And she said, yeah, I'll do that. So it's a, it's a good cool, one right? out there. I know. Um, <laughs> well, I know you got to go to like fancy thread X and get all this, you know, knowledge or whatever, but I got the ultimate wisdom sitting on a center block around a little fire pit at uh, our good buddy in Rochester. You have to be speaking of Tony, tiny, Tony Fish. Maloney. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was, um, it's, he was gracious enough to let me and Christina stay with him for a couple days. Huge mistake. It was, mistake. It huge was mistake. glorious. He's our, I'm sure he regretted it. I'm sure he, he's still <laughs> he regretting probably does. it. probably yeah. <laughs> um, But the thing about Tony is, is like you said, wisdom, he, it's a mix of just a half horse shit, half wisdom jar, like right. bottle, bottle For of that. Sure. Yeah. Right? <laughs> there was a couple of times when I, I told him, I asked him a question, like we were just spitballing work stuff back mm -hmm. and forth and talking about life and all this other stuff. And I always had to stop before I asked him a question that I actually wanted an answer to. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, like, can you, can you like give me a real like suggestive <laughs> answer on this one? Right, right. Um, yeah, I love um, Tony though. Him and his, uh, him and his wife and his kids were amazing. They were mm -hmm. super fun. Yeah. He just remodeled so much of his house and basement included. Mm -hmm. Is that where you stayed in the remodel? Yep, basement. Stayed in his old where he lived. So now he's going to remodel it again. Basically, uh -huh. after yeah, tear the there. drywall out, yeah, I'd tear off, spatter tear, everywhere, tear everything out of there, yeah, redo it again. Yeah, I told I his wife, I was like, Do you want me to take the sheets? Do you want me to strip the bed or do you want me to leave it? Because I figured he's gonna want to go down there and huff all my my mm. essence off of the sheets, <laughs> some of that mojo, yeah. Um, well, I know why you went there, and that was for the stupid eclipse, right. Mm -hmm. Didn't see a yeah. single, single piece of the sun, the hundred percent clouds. <laughs> right. Well, I, here, um, I did see it. I really didn't actually, cause I didn't have any glasses, the proper glasses and I didn't want to go blind, but it, I was at the time it happened at around two o'clock here. And at the time I was in the yard doing some, I was planting a few flowers actually. Um, yeah, I'm feeling that good, dude. I'm doing landscaping. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And and so I noticed it became a little overcast for a moment. And then it wasn't. And I was like, well, there was the eclipse. Which I got to admit that I think that was the coolest part. Like, I know everybody was talking about how, like, you know, seeing seeing totality and all this other stuff. But, like, we were just sitting by a fire at his neighbor's fire pit and just sitting there. And then, like, gradually over a couple minutes, it got, like, straight nighttime, like darkness. It didn't get straight nighttime. I wasn't in totality. We were like 90. Yeah, well, we were. That was the reason why I drove to Rochester. But it was like complete darkness. And then all of a sudden, a couple of minutes later, it was like daytime again. Mm -hmm. And it was it was crazy how we were talking about this after, like how we have zero control. Like hmm? this mean? is happening right now. Just like nature was like happening in front of us. Yeah, you don't and you, it was just you like, realize you, that all the time. Like, yeah, you don't have control of nature ever. I know, but I'm just saying in that moment, it was like, mm. while the sun is gone. That's cool. Well, here's, here's my take. Totality lame. That's what I think. Totality. Okay. Total You're one of those guys. Totality. Is it, is it dumb that I don't care about the sun? I'm like, All right, fuck face. Just enjoy it for a second. I did. Like, it's kind of neat, but I don't get worked up over it anyway. <laughs> um, you know, it's just one of those uh -huh. things. 
That's right. It all starts with the screen. And whether it's new stretches or restretches, Frank and his team do it the best. To find out more, go to graphicscreenfashion.com, F F F F F rank.com or great fucking screens.com. Cleaning screens is no fun, but EasyWay makes it way more funner. Their line of eco-friendly chemicals will make reclaiming screens a whole lot easier. Check them out at EasyWay.com. EasyWay. It's the easiest way, baby. Graphics is the source for production-ready digital art and remote art staffing. We use them every single day. Learn more at graphicsource.com or a more convenient website, 1-900-HOTSTUFF.COM. Super convenient. Choosing the right emulsion for your shop is complicated, and that's why we love Chromaline. Go to Chromaline.com to watch Kev's vids or contact him on Instagram at the Emulsion Guru and get the answers you want. And also Yearn for. You're in for? Yearn for. Yearn. Yearn for. Oh, I yearn. see. Yarn. S and S. S and S. S and S. S and S. That's right. S and S has been our go-to shirt source since day one. They have eight distribution centers, which allows them to ship to 41 states in just one day. Get yourself an inside or outside or both at ssactivewear.com. I forgot to say the rep Perfect. part. Perfect. <laughs> nope. Get yourself inside or outside. Yeah. ssactivewear.com. Oh, oh, boy. This is going to be a fun one today. Mm -hmm. What do we got today, bud? While we stretch it out. Still today, we are chatting with Drew Fellman from West Cliff, Inc. in Santa Cruz, California. Speaking of beautiful, that sounds beautiful. Santa Cruz? Yeah, I've never been there, but it just sounds beautiful. He looks like he's from Santa Cruz. What's <laughs> up, dude? Hey, how's it going? How are you? I'm doing good. It's a beautiful day. You fucker. That's what we were saying is that California was going to be amazing right now. Yeah, it actually snowed here last week. Really? Yeah. Are you at a higher, higher elevation then? So the Santa Cruz mountains go from, uh, they, I don't know exactly how high they go, but it definitely snowed at the peaks and you can mm. actually snowboard about, I mean, snowboard about like, uh, 20 minutes up the road when it snows. It's one like, of those places when you can snowboard and surf in the same day. Uh, yeah, you can definitely do that. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. How are you guys? Uh, pretty good. You know, it's, it was 75 and beautiful and sunny yesterday, and I got a taste of spring and summer, and I worked outside on the back deck, and I was really looking forward to doing yard work. I was like, man, I can't wait to just, like, get out here and, like, clean things up and do this, and then now it's, like, 49, 50 and rain for the next three days, so it just killed my vibe. Yeah, it's been doing that here, too. It'll be super sunny and then get slammed with rain for, like, four days. It's gross. Well, yeah. you know, uh, that rain makes you appreciate the sunshine, you know, just a oh, little yeah. bit more that those <laughs> sunny days taste just a little bit sweeter. That's true. Mm -hmm. Definitely. How's work, man? How's things? It's good, man. It finally picked up. We were pretty slow, uh, January, February, and then, uh, it finally kind of, kind of picked up and we're good. Feels yeah. like, feels like. It's funny, like certain people I talk to, it's it's all over the place. Like some are like, you know, I'm slammed. I got so much work or I got, you know, things are back to normal. And then other people I talk to, it's crickets. Yeah, and it's it's definitely based on their markets. So, I mean, how are you guys doing right now, Andy? You guys are cruising? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it, it changed for us. Like I said, it's been maybe a month. It was probably mid-March. Um, early to mid March, where everything started to shift, it wasn't like a like a tidal wave, and it just switched one you know everything in one day. That's happened before. It sort of mm -hmm. ramped up over a week or so, and it hasn't let up. I mean, we're not like busy, busy, but we're busy. You know, it's it's yeah. just the right amount. I think that uh, my overall I can't remember if I've mentioned this before, but my overall strategy right now is is or I would call it. Cautiously optimistic. Yeah, that's what mm. I would say. Like, um, Same. Uh, you know, I'm not adding to the team. Uh, I had somebody apply through Facebook, which I thought was interesting. 
but uh, as, as like a Facebook message and I might meet with them, but we're not, we're not adding to the team. We're not adding equipment. We're, we're happy right now to be spinning presses and that's kind of where it's at. I, I do have a question or an, an idea anyway um, that we can talk about in a little bit or whenever about, I about ask sales. You. Yeah. Okay, I want to ask you real quick because this came just to mind that because I just added it because I'm I'm in the process of like revamping the website right now. Okay. And one thing I wanted to add to the bottom, like the site map, was like apply here. So oh. I have now like an online application to where I'll just get like an email with you know like a regular form mm -hmm. of when someone applies. So like if someone walks in or someone online tells me they want to you know, apply here. I can just be like, go to the website, do this thing. Do you have that? Or do either of you have that? No, actually, uh, we get walk-ins all the time. Like, Hey, here's my resume. Can I work here? Like we had three people come by last week asking for work to work at the shop. And, uh, I'm like, I don't know. We're pretty good right now. We got a pretty good team. Maybe when we get super busy, but, um, we just yeah. got a really good team right now. And uh, it's funny. I feel like when you add another person to a team, it kind of changes the dynamic. Mm. Oh, for sure. And then you're like, wait, this is, this is so much different. Like what, what we had before is actually like chill, chiller, but super, I don't know. It's just more straightforward and efficient. You got to test out that person's weirdness is usually what happens here. Yeah. Is we get them in and then we kind of all walk on eggshells for a little bit because we're like wondering how far we can take the jokes or how far we can do certain <laughs> things. And then when we figure out how they're just like us, it's like, all right, cool. We're all back on the same page. We can be disgusting creatures together. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We've been having weird people. I don't want to say weird people, but we've been having people apply that you wouldn't imagine. Like people that were fully into other industries or other trades or other things like being like, Oh, I want to work here and be a screen printer. And it's like, you were a welder for 20 years. Like why, why the shift? Why the change? You yeah. Know? When, so. uh, when people ask if they want to work at the shop, I'm like, do you, do you know what it entails? Do you know, right. like folding shirts, cleaning screens? And I feel like a lot of the time they're like, Oh, we're just printing shirts. Like it's going to be so much fun. I'm like, that's not quite the, quite especially the, the job that you might come into as more of an entry level thing is like not the most glamorous side of it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I think, um, you came I think, and saw me at one point. Do you have like, was it family up here or something? Yeah. My great grandpa uh, got a late, or I guess there's a, a lake house in the family on skinny Atlas. Mm -hmm. And I've been up there a good six times and uh, I was watching the shirt show and I realized that Whitney point was an hour away or so. And so my, my, I convinced my folks to drive me over and uh, say, what's up. So I just, were yeah. you, were you super disappointed once you got there? Super underwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. We couldn't <laughs> figure out what to eat in your town. <laughs> There's not much. There's like three pizza places and that's about it. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it was super awesome seeing your shop. I kind of grew my shop without really knowing anything. So basically yeah. you guys taught me the way. <laughs> Good. Well, we're sorry where you're at, where you're at because of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, um, you know, Christina does tech checks and she talked to you um, before today, I know it was a couple days ago or whenever it was, and I saw the notes, I read through them and it said something about how you used to be a little bit of a larger shop than you are currently. And so you, you alluded to that just a minute ago when you said, you know, your team size right now feels good. Like the vibe is right. And the energy is all good. Um, do you like, is that something you want to do is grow your, your business or do you like it is where, you, where it is, or do you want to maybe downsize more? I mean, where are you at um, right now with with uh, just how everything feels like the size of your shop? So right now we we actually mid year last year we got a second press uh, auto press uh, which is a four color. Okay. Um, right now we're only three people, and 
um, which is, it feels good. Um, like last year I was adding a lot of, uh, catchers and screen cleaners and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, I feel like, um, at one point I actually had six people and I was like, yeah, I'm going to get a sales guy. I'm going to get a, a person to do the computers, customer service. I'm going to have four people on the floor doing production. And then I didn't really know what to do after that. I was like, I was like, what do I do now? And I feel you like go, uh, goals... you surf and you snowboard and you stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but then once you add all of those people and you don't really have your finger on the pulse of the business, like, like talking to customers, like, Hey, that, that check needs to come in right now. Like we got stuff to pay. Like no one really has the sense of urgency that I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of like it. lot, my buddy was doing sales and I mean, he couldn't, we still haven't really figured out sales per se. And, uh, he like, couldn't really get any bites. And we had to, within a month and a half, I had to just like let people go. And they're my kind of friends. So I was like, sorry guys, but this is the reality of it. Hmm. And then we were back down to like four people, three people. And I was like, wow, this is like very relaxing. Like we just go over the jobs in the morning they take care of it. I can talk to customers. And so yeah. right now we're back to the basics. I feel like that's a weird thing to describe to people that work for you is kind of like, we have this weird sixth sense as an owner of like what we should do and shouldn't do because of say like the funds or like what's happening. Because I feel like if if I was stepped out of everything completely and they just made all decisions, I feel like a lot of those things wouldn't necessarily be cared for. They'd be like, oh, well, let's just order this or do this or do this, regardless of cost or, you know, I, I think I brought this up before where it's like someone's customer might be a little grumpy or something or not even say anything to the customer at all and be like, oh, it has to be there by this day. When in reality, all they could do is pick up the phone and be like, hey, I know you said you need it by this day, but like, when's the actual date you need these by? And they're like, oh, well, I just wanted to kind of get them maybe like four days early, but I could get them like a day later. That saves you hundreds of dollars on overnight shipping shirts. But I'm just yeah. saying you you as the owner are like, holy shit, like, let's give them a call. I don't want to lose a couple hundred dollars. Whereas that salesperson just might be like, well, I don't want to piss them off, so I'm just going to overnight it because it's no skin off of their back, really. You know what I mean? They're just getting it out and they feel better about the situation. But in reality, it's a couple hundred bucks. Like that, ha that happened to me yesterday. Like I had a client was like, Hey, uh, we're in town. Our shows tonight. Like I went to their show last night, my buddies. And, uh, I, I wasn't going to be able to get the shirts cause I didn't realize it was last night. And I, I was like, well, I can drive to Oakland to go pick up 40 shirts because I said they would be done. And then I made a couple calls and someone's like, Hey, I know a shop in um, San Jose and they have 40 shirts and you can go pick them up right now. And so I just drove half an hour instead of driving two hours in traffic. Right. Just like little things like that. Like you gotta be like, gotta be on it. Right. But is I that think a goal, that we though? would have the, is that like something that you want to, is that a goal of a, of a shop owner? I mean, I guess there's different, different <laughs> types. There's different, there's different, you know, how, how do I put this? So there's different size or different phases of where you're at in your shop. And I'm, I'm definitely one to say that I was an owner operator. I was absolutely involved in so many parts of our business. As, as we grew, we added people and I was still involved in every department, you know, like on a daily basis, I was having meetings and, you know, doing all of those things, but eventually you just can't, you know, you scale and there's, there's just no way you can have a handle on every single thing that's going on. And I don't know that I want to, that sounds like pretty stressful day. You know, I, I, in, instead we have people and we talk to them and we, and we, you know, train them on our processes. And then when something changes, sometimes even, you know, as a suggestion from them, like it's their idea, like they're like, Hey, you know, here's, here's the way we've been doing it. And now um, what if we did it like this? Because it would be faster than a lot of times, you know, they help improve the process. And so I think that I've really been considering this. I was on um, a three hour plane flight and I was thinking about this almost the whole time. And that is, is should we as shop owners, especially owner operators, should that be our primary goal is to be 
in that business all the time, you know, working like in that business? Or um, should we get it to a spot where we can slowly step away, you know, and not burn out and learn how to work more on the business? I know that's really cliche. You should work on the business, not in the business. But I mean, yeah. I think it's real. I think there's the, the reason why that's a saying is because that's really real. I think that if I spent more time working on this business on like the zoom out and like the bigger picture stuff and let everyone else do the other stuff. Even if, even if it costs me more some days, you know, like you lose money, $200 on an overnight shipping, whatever. In the end, it's, it doesn't really matter because you know, you're, you're, you look at your PL and we're up this much or whatever it is, you know, like every, every single, in fact, I will probably make some of those mistakes or I'll probably overlook something because I'm in a hurry and I'm like, hey, I'm just going to, I don't have time to get a quote for these or whatever. I'm just going to go online and order and put them in a cart and get them here. You know what I mean? So like, I think that I have made the mistake. I made the mistake for years of being in the business too long. And this back injury has forced me to really rethink my role here and how much time and what I want to be working on. And so that's what I'm going to do. That's what I, and that's what I've been doing. And I think that that's incredibly hard, like to, to move from being in the business to all of a sudden being like working on the business. That's really, really hard. You know, you have to have the right yeah. people in place and you have to have to know what you're going to work on, I guess. I don't know. It's like, um, it's, it's, it's a challenge for sure. Drew, how do you feel about that being that you were where you were at, you were comfortable and then you decided you wanted to somewhat scale and then now you're back to feeling where you should have been or comfy again. Like, how do you feel about that dynamic of, cause you said you kind of wanted to be talking to customers and doing that kind of thing. Like, is that what you'd like doing? Is that what you want to do? No, um, no. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like, uh, I, I try, I want to grow into a shop that's like running two autos, you know, all day, and it's just, um, I feel like we're just, every time I try and grow to that point, it's, it's tough to get there where it's comfortable. And, um, basically I, I want to do what Andy's saying is just like, uh, you know, step away from the business, but I don't think we're there yet. We're only about four years old as a shop. And I feel like the time to grow the time it takes to grow to a comfortable spot, we aren't quite there yet. So mm -hmm. I'm laying down the, I'm, I'm just kind of in the zone, kind of just like making it happen for right now. And hopefully we'll grow to that spot where we're, you know, we're kind of cruising and having fun and taking the jobs that we do want. Yeah. Well, I think like Andy was saying, like that's kind of where I'm at now is, and I wasn't trying to say that like it's not doable without the owner and that saying of like, OK, this is the better financial decision or this is what like, obviously, that's important. But I think having me here working on the business and doing specific tasks that I want to do, stuff that's not going to burn me out, stuff that like I'm passionate about with here is very important. But the key people I put in place to basically run the shop almost have a mentality of like like a WWDD, like what would Dylan do in this scenario? Yeah. yeah. Um, so they know like, you know, pretty, they're, uh, they're also like my best friends that I've had for forever. So they definitely know like what I would say or what I would do in this scenario. But if it was anything that was like a big question and I tried to tell them this the other day, cause I feel like they were proud of the fact that they were like, Hey, we're running this place. We're stoked on this place. Like all these things they almost took too much pride into it to where they were like, we don't ever want to bother you with anything. You know what I mean? Like you shouldn't be involved in this. You shouldn't whatever. But I told them straight up, I was like, guys, like I'm still fucking here. Like I'm still doing things. I'm still working on things. Like I would like it almost if you came to me with things once in a while. So I knew roughly what was yeah. going on. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to be completely out of it. Yeah. I, like, I want to have the pulse on what's happening. I think that the way to do that is to have regularly scheduled meetings, you know, because I'm sort of, I fall into a little bit of what you're talking about too. That happens here where, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be gone from the shop for a couple of days or whatever. And um, I'll, I'll be here and then something, you know, I'll, I'll walk by somebody and say, Oh, what's going on there. 
and they'll tell me and I mean, I, I've, I will like, I wish that they would have, you know, reached out and, and contacted me about it, but they didn't. And I think that that's my fault. I think that they want to, you know, they want to be capable of working on their own and solving oh, problems for sure, on yeah, their yeah. own. But at the same time, if we met and we said, okay, well, look, let's meet, um, you know, like the first of the month, every month. And, and then we'll, we'll kind of go over some of the things like, you know, tell me about some of the things that are happening. You know what I mean? Like some of the issues, yeah. like let me, tell me three bad things and tell me three good things. And maybe they would have mentioned one of those and we're like, oh, well, next time maybe do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, instead of in the moment, come and talk to you, solve the problem. Why can't you like look backwards and, and talk about solving the problem? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, uh, uh, maybe, I maybe do, that's the way to do it. <clears throat> I think that's a good way too. Cause I am super, super proud of them for, a just being here as long as they've been here and also like taking the reins on some stuff and going above and beyond and things that i didn't even know existed you know like like brian kind of took over some of this office role stuff and he has been like taking notes and doing these things and we implemented pipe drive for crm stuff and he's just like I want to log in for that because I want to be able to go in and like check the progress and see these things and learn the program for myself and like all these other things. And it's like, I didn't ask him to do that. You know what I mean? Like he just wants to be on top of it and they're like prideful in their job. And it's like, I love that. Like it's, I'm stoked that that's happening. Mm -hmm. But again, like I want to like a new thing, a new part of my role is like working on the business. But like the thing I've always been passionate about with this business is like the marketing and like doing sales stuff. So we've been having like regular sales meetings and like they're going really well. Like we just had one before I got on this and it was like, we got so many things off the agenda and the girls worked on things and Brian worked on things where we were all on the same page and we were getting the shit done and it feels good. And we're kind of doing like the long haul thing for this. So we'll expect results in a little while. And it's, it's awesome. Like, I'm just stoked on the way things are going right now. Being that I am out of the business on the day to day completely. Like I, which is good and bad. Like it, it's good that I'm not doing that, but it's also bad that like there's customers and jobs that come through the door that I never see. I'm just like, I don't even know what's going on, but I'm in my office, like working on things or whatever. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's different. Like, I can't tell, like if somebody came to me or if, you know, Drew, you came to me and we're like, Oh, how does it feel to be in that position? I'd be like, it feels really good to be at this point, but it's also like kind of sad because like, it's not what I've been used to. Yeah. It's not the same business anymore, but it's still awesome. It's just another thing. Yeah. I'll be out and uh, people be like, Hey, this is true. He printed our shirts. I'm like, I, I didn't print your shirts. <laughs> Francisco right, printed your shirts. Yeah. I don't yeah. want my name on this. I don't know. Yeah, it's cool though. I, I enjoy. Um, I actually get a, a lot of work from going out to shows and just talking to people. Like half my work is just going out to shows and talking to random people about printing. And they're like, hey, I need 800 shirts. I'm like, no way. <laughs> Let me help you out. I know a guy. Yeah. yeah. yeah Are you, so, is that, is that your go-to method of like just bringing in new people is just hitting the streets and being in things that are requiring your services? Um, so right now we're running Google ads, which is pretty good. And, uh, but I've tried to just cold call and walk into businesses and I feel like that's pretty tough. Um, people usually, I feel like aren't quite ready to make an order. And you're like, you don't want to be pushy, but you're like, I'm available. Um, and so, yeah, we've, I've been trying to figure out how the sales thing works with screen printing. Cause I've tried to hire a couple salespeople and it seems like they have trouble, like breaking into getting leads and having people ha uh, making orders go through and stuff like that. It takes like nine months to a year to get somebody like even starting to show results with that. I feel like they have to get their feet wet and have to yeah. hit the ground running. And then eventually you'll see like a return. So I feel like you have to take a bath on it for a little while to like see results from that. And we've kind of been like, again, now that I'm in this role, like a lot of the discussions we've been having with the sales stuff isn't necessarily on like 
call this person, do this person, do this thing. It's more on what, what can we offer them first? Like almost all of our discussions have been on the, the giveaway boxes or the, yeah. um, you know, things that we can offer. So like right now we're looking at like different promo items, not to sound cheesy, but it's just like, we almost want to have, you know, like totes of specific style promo items or shirts with specific style printing, like, you know, water-based print, discharge print, uh, plus all print, a puff, or whatever, have those at the ready to where they can grab a branded box for whatever client they're trying to talk to or send samples to. And they can go over to like the sample room and just be like, Oh, one of these, one of these, one of these handwritten letter, you know, everything we want to do and talk to them about and then mail them the box after our conversation of like kind of warming it up a little bit. So I'm very focused on what can we do for you before we ask you even for any money at all? Like, how can we help? And then the talk of we'll print your shit. I like that psychology for sure. Yeah. yeah. I have, um, while we're on the sales topic, I have something to share that Guy Raz was, um, his presentation, he was a keynote at uh, ThreadX last weekend. And what he decided to do was share um, six truths, he called them, from some like some of his interviews, some of his podcasts. And one of them, I, I kind of stuck, it stuck with me and was probably my biggest takeaway. And that is, get your customers to be your sales force. Mm -hmm. And so I have an example of this because my son, uh, he started this detailing business. He's in high school and he bought all the gear to be a detailer and he started detailing and he was trying to market himself and um, he tried a few different things, but what turned out to be the best thing ever was that one day he did a teacher's car at his, at his school and he, he detailed it. And that teacher posted on Facebook, just the picture of his car, how clean it was and said, you know, his detailing uh, company is called Crispy Detailing. And he said, he, he posted the, like the name of the company. He said, hey, this guy detailed my car, did an outstanding job and a picture of this fresh, beautiful car. And he got endless work from it, like just constant people contacting him. Right, because, like he got all the blood stains out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no joke, a customer speaking for your business is the best thing that you can really Yeah, because it's not for. you being cheesy. It's not yeah. you pushing your product. It's not you trying to close the deal. It's nothing but a customer saying, hey, you know, this, this person, you know, I did work with this person or I got service, whatever it was. You know, I bought something from this customer. I got t-shirts from this customer, or, or I'm sorry, from this person, from this company, and they were awesome. And then they share that on Facebook and that's golden, you know? And so I think that if, if I focused or if we focused as companies on somehow um, incentivizing, you know, our, our, our customers to share the story, to share our story, then that's a huge win. And then it's yeah. all just going to kind of come our way. And so I don't know, that's, that's my, that's going to be my focus this year is to figure out a way to do that. Yeah. And I think that's, that's one of the things too, is that like as cheesy as it is. And it's funny because like I started re reading traction, well, I say reading, but listening to, and then I brought traction up to Tony and he was like, fuck that book. <laughs> anyway, like, um, one of the things like it talks about in the, it, in the beginning was kind of like how you should do the whole uh what is it company motto or whatever or like what what is your company all about what does it stand for kind of thing to get everybody behind it mission like, statement or what yeah mission mean? statement stuff and i'm like i hate all of this like i hate that so much <laughs> because they give examples and it's like yeah you know it's like yeah honesty and integrity over everything and like all this other stuff and i'm just like jesus christ mm -hmm. like this is all just like yeah, shitty buzzwords and yeah. like you know, I, I get that there's people that are all about that stuff, but like it does nothing for me. Everybody here would just be like, this is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. But it made me think, too, of like, all right, like what in reality, if I had to sit everyone down here and be like, these are the two things that are like the most important to me, regardless of everything. And so that everybody knows, like, no matter what the what happens in the scenario for a customer these are the two things that i want to make sure we 100 percent hit on and it's just like 
customer service and quality over everything is yeah. basically what I said. No, so like right I brought that up. You. I brought that up in the meeting and it was just kind of like, no matter what happens, like if the print is, you look at it and we're all screen printers. I could say this honestly to us is like, if we look at some jobs and we're like, this is, this is passable. This is okay. The customer is never going to know the difference. But the truth of it is, is do you know the difference? Like, you know, in your heart that like you could do better or you could have fixed that registration or you could have done mm. an extra spin or something to got it to a certain point. That's the quality part that you're talking the about. Quality the quality part, right? I want quality. to do that. Like, I want to make sure that we're doing everything in that job that we can do to make it the best thing. But I want to make sure our customer service is amazing. So that's the thing like what Andy was talking about. I feel like if we focus really hard and it goes to the sales thing too, is like if we focus really hard on the customer service angle first before trying to like sell more and do all this other stuff, if we just make sure we're doing the best possible job for everybody who comes here, then that referral from other people is going to be, you know, hey, they were amazing. They were super, course, super helpful, yeah. whatever. And yeah. it's kind of like the same thing like with, I mean, me and Andy do this and in our text groups or just in friends in general is like, if I'm going to buy a piece of equipment that I don't already have or know about, the bet your ass the very first thing I'm doing is not talking to the sales rep. It's talking to people I know that <laughs> yeah. have that piece of equipment Yeah, for and sure. being like, is this a hunk of shit or is this thing yeah. actually worth what it's worth? And again, like that's, that's everything. Like if, if someone makes a good piece of equipment, but they're dickhead and they're horrible to work with, I might yeah. rather go with another piece of equipment where it's somebody that's like a really good group of people or they have amazing customer service because I know that if something goes wrong, they got my back. Yeah. I feel like I'm really learning that as we go into our like fourth year, I like the pace at which you go into different pieces of equipment or, you know, how you change the dynamic of your shop is like, all right, uh, what does this actually look like? And how, like, what do we need to do to make this all, you know, to work, to grow in the right direction without having to take steps back? Um, yeah. What were his other truths? Um, I, I mean, you don't have to remember all, them all, but do you have like a I rough... took pictures of... It was like a, he had a slide, he had a PowerPoint. And so I took pictures of everything. I can share them as the, sh as the weeks go on and stuff. But I thought that okay. was the. We'll uh, do that you know, one today. That one's today's because, well, we ended up talking on about sales anyway. And I've said, and we've said for years, um, even on this show that, you know, we're a customer service company that happens to print t-shirts. Right. And while that's complicated to say because we can't lose focus on the quality part of it too, right? I mean, it can be a fantastic customer service company, but if your quality is shit, that's a problem. And that's the complicated thing about having a business is it's not just one thing. And so, you know, um, I did the, this very thing happened. I happened to be, I was talking to Kyle like three hours ago and about something completely unrelated and a press op comes up and says, Hey, here's two options. Here's once around, here's twice around. You know, this one has an extra flash and uh, there's 700 shirts. And so that's a big decision. It's not like, oh, it's going to take an extra 10 minutes. And, yeah. and we're all just standing there and everybody, I, I stayed out of it actually. And they said, and Kyle said twice around. And okay, so <laughs> it's like, we make those calls that are difficult that because the plan wasn't to go twice around and all of a sudden that's going to cost us extra time on a press, right? And your schedule is going to be off a little yeah. bit, but it has to look good. You know, that customer, that particular customer has come here like for five years, you know, and also we're going to give them some, uh, you know, a shirt that doesn't look as good. That's crazy. And so I think that, yes, we're a customer service company that happens to print t-shirts, but we're really good at that thing too. <laughs> you know, it's which yeah, is why I'm trying to say that I'm proud of like Brian mm -hmm. and Bill in that sense is that mm -hmm. I feel like for years before they took these roles, the people in the shop would come to me almost always mm -hmm. with the idea of like, we can do this and we can get away with doing it like this. And it's pretty damn good. But then there's certain jobs where they would come to me and be like, well, we could do this in one spin or do this in two spins. And they're looking at me waiting for me to be like, you know, it's good enough running as one spin. But you know what I mean? Like now oh, I do. Yeah. Now we're at the point, And I mean, we've been at this point for a long time, but it's just like 
I, they don't even look to me at that anymore. It's now just like, no, the right thing to do is to do the extra spin or the extra flash or yep. remix the ink is always a big one. They look at it yeah, and like, yeah. this is close enough. This is, come on, this color's mm-hmm. close enough. And it's like, did you already fucking know the answer before you come to me? <laughs> like, you know, yeah. the right thing to do is to remake the ink. For me, it's the, it's kind of the opposite. My, the uh, guy, Francisco, that prints for Westcliff Inc. He's so detailed and he, he, if he needs to go around twice, he's going to go around twice and not even ask me about it because <laughs> he, he's been printing for 10 years and he is so into the, like you need to rein him back the other way of like, yeah. you don't need to do this in 10 spins. Like this was good <laughs> yeah. at five. Yeah. Like printing inside tag sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, let's, let's bang him out. Like let's get him down the dryer and it's lining up perfectly and right um uh yeah i definitely um i'm pretty focused on the numbers and what we got to get done every day and i'm like if we get these three projects done today we're we're golden this is awesome and so i kind of like tell the team what the goal is for the day we'll meet up in the morning and kind of just see see what inks we got to mix what strings we got to do talk about if we're doing water base if we're doing plastisol um what if a certain shirt doesn't get under base um so i don't want to be that guy but i think it might be it might be beneficial then for you to have that discussion between you and your employees of like this is my goal for this like my goal is to yeah obviously like we want quality and whatever but we also the goal is that we need to get these jobs done today yeah so where do we meet where do those things, those two things meet in the middle and be happy and make love is like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, For sure. I know you think you could do this, say tag or something and have everything be pristine and perfect, but is that going to hinder us from getting two more jobs done today? Like Possibly. we need to, we need to come to an agreement here that like, this is what we need to do to get the job done. Yeah. Today. I mean, I think there's a, there's a point of diminishing returns. I mean, you know, once, you know, the, if the once you're almost there, if you're let let's say ninety five percent there, then maybe that's good. That's still really good. What is you that? Know, like, what is that saying? Is don't let don't, don't let, let good or get get in the way of great or something like that. Yeah, I'm yeah, that's um, that. Is, that, is that what it is? Um, I think it's don't let perfect get in the way of great or something like that. Yeah, so, Lon I mean, Winner said it, and I can't remember how it goes. I'm fucking it up. Sorry, Lon. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. sometimes going for perfection is nearly impossible and you have to be OK with great and don't let perfect get in the way of that, you know, because yeah. that can that can screw things up, too. Anyway, yeah, there's def- um, definitely a pace that um, the balance that we all know. We all know about, like, the mm-hmm. pace at which we got to, you know, we can we we're seeing the pace of the shop and we're like, OK, we got to really pick it up because this isn't working right now. I mean, you guys are obviously more seasoned, so you guys got the teams dialed, but, um, well, sort of, I mean, you know, over the years, teams change. Yeah. (laughs) So not teams change. And so does, so do personalities. And so do things within each um, team member. I mean, sometimes there's, you know, someone and, and all of a sudden they, they get married and they have kids. And so they're going to be completely different after that, you know? So it's like, yeah, we've been doing it for longer, but that doesn't mean it's any easier to, to no. manage a team. You know what I mean? So it's like uh, we, we still go through the same things that you're going That's through. That's something I've learned doing this and visiting all these shops all the time and doing all this is like no matter the size, no matter how long they've been doing it, whatever, we all have fucking mm-hmm. problems. Like nobody's just like sitting back counting cash all day and like the machine is perfectly running downstairs and like every employee is dialed and everything. It's just, it's not yeah, real. Yeah. It's not an attainable real it, stop looking at Instagram. Like it's not that it's everybody has issues with employees. Everybody has issues with funding. Everybody has issues with everything. So Dude, my, it's just my, uh, my printer's car caught on fire on Monday on the way to work. And it's just like the engine bait is lit on fire. And he sent me a photo and it's during when the eclipse happened. It was the exact same time. His car just caught on fire. And we were like, and he oh. thought it was the end of the world. 
no, no, we got it. We figured, we figured <laughs> it out, but, but, uh, yeah, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Every day is a different, different adventure. For those that are listening and not watching, um, Drew was wearing, uh, like a MTV West I do love that shirt. I know because it just works because it's upside down or whatever. I like That's it. Kind of like our mild boys over here. The mild, the M is really. Was, yeah, but I'm more into w. the leopard print. Like that was, <laughs> that was a good touch. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's actually kind of sick because, uh, this was the T and I took the exact, um, I took the exact shape. And then I took this, the top and just put it down here. And then the V I just turned. So it's actually the exact shape of the, the TV just, it's just a little turned around. turned around and actually okay. on the, on the, the Brown, I put a little puff in it, but it didn't puff fully, I guess, but that's great. Get a little Let's just keep talking about his look. Let's just keep, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like I miss, I miss the days of high in high school of wearing your band t-shirt with your long sleeve thermal underneath. I know. Let's bring and that back. Go. Yeah. Do you have, do you have a uh, Dicky shorts on right now with long white socks on? So I got, I got actually, <laughs> I hope he has no pants on. There you go. <laughs> I just got some shorts, um, but I do love the Dickies pants cut off at the knees. Yeah. That's like my favorite. Like I could just wear that all day. That's like my power stance is like, it was like all of high school for me was Dickie shorts and Dickies jeans, like not jeans, but full length pants. And obviously I wore vans for forever or air walks. And then the band shirt with the thermal underneath. Yeah, it's the best. It's like my power outfit is the the thermal on the top, the mm-hmm. shirt and the cut off dickies and bands classics. If I'm wearing that, I feel like I could do anything. You're in the zone, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> power move. Do you have any questions for us before we get to over unders? Um, let's see. I was going to ask about what what you guys primarily use for your fleece adhesive, um. But print grip, we've been using that. It seems pretty, pretty good. My biggest thing yeah. with the print grip, and I'm going to ask you again, because this is, this is exactly what we were talking about earlier. It's I don't want to talk to print grip. I want to talk to the people who actually use yeah. it. What are your results for hoodies? Like, is it one time around scrub, one time around scrub? Or are you like three, three times around, four times around? It's about three. And are you doing it at three because it's still tacky and you know that if you do four or five, you might start to not get tacky? Because I don't want to do it when it's like, oh, it's starting to fail because then you're going to have issues. I yeah, want to be so like, hey, the safe zone here is safe zone three spins. Two, maybe. It also depends uh, on the hoodie, too. Like there's a lot of different yeah. internal fuzziness or balls or whatever. Also, the type of scrubber that you have is pretty important. If you just use a one of the screen scrubbers. It takes a lot, a lot more time than like a, a shower scrubber. And so if you get a shower oh, like scrubber, a bristly brush, a, uh, like a bristly brush, you can get it done like four times as fast. Oh, that's a good tip. Yeah. I haven't seen that. Andy, yeah, are you I, just using text tag still? Uh, so we use web um, most of the time. So for fleece. Yeah. Right. Same. For fleece. But for your actual adhesive for t-shirts and stuff you're using? Oh, we use Rolltac. Rolltac. So okay. it's not a water base. It's um Yeah, I tried that actually too. What'd you think? Um, I think we we probably just ran out of it because I got a little sampler. Probably just ran out of it and then I don't know, I forgot or something to mm-hmm. reorder. Cause it has to come all the way from I think Illinois. Yeah, it's it's St. Louis, so it's like actually a yeah. St. Louis based company, and so it's um, we've used it for years. It works uh, really well, yeah. but you cannot, like you were just talking about, use a brush or anything like that. It's once it's on there, it's on there, and so we change our palette tape like once a week or something, and so that's yeah. something that Dylan's like I know Upstate doesn't do that. You know, they clean their their palettes, and so there's there's pros and cons, but it it works really really well. It lasts a long time, so we like it. Yeah. One thing I've always wanted to try, which I haven't really done yet, and someone did it, talked about, about it on this podcast, and then um, Jeff from Stampinator brought it up when I saw him at the show, too, because we were talking about different tacks or something. And he was saying, even if you use web, you should web the palette, and then before it spins to load the hoodie, take the card and card over the whole yeah. palette yeah. to get the 
the gooey grossness off first so that it doesn't transfer to the exactly so it can be more of a retail finish and that's what joe um you know like gorilla joe it was like, gorilla joe who told us that remember that he guy's had, awesome he had the yeah, he, card with the face on it yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so that's a that's a great hack for sure is to you know don't just spray it on don't just go. spray and go you mm-hmm. should it first yeah have you guys ever heard of like if you leave your web tack on the dryer and it gets a little bit hot that it sprays a little bit thinner no i I am terrified of putting any aerosol can too close (laughs) to the dryer Mm -hmm. when it goes through on accident you're everyone's like oh my god it just i won't (laughs) mention i won't mention said shop but I've heard horror stories from friends that know other shops that basically they've had shitty employees and they, they quit. And the first thing they do before they quit is they grab web cans or spray cans and throw them in the dryer and leave. Don't give, oh. don't give anybody any ideas. What? This is, we need to cut that. <laughs> that is out. crazy. That is crazy. So, Not cool. I've had the dryer I used to have. It was an American dryer that I got from, uh, I think I got it from Ricky Deals uh, at Match Play, and I think he was saying they accidentally dropped a can of web or something on the dryer, and it rolled in, and it blew up, and it blew the top because that dryer had like panels on top that you could remove to clean, and it blew the panels off, and like this whole like thing, it blew a huge hole in the um, in the belt. That's so insane. You're stressing me yeah. out. Yeah, this is so. <laughs> I to your tip of Woo. warming it up on the dryer mm. scares me, but I do <laughs> like the idea of. I don't like the idea of warming or heating up a compressed air. Yeah, chemicals. That's a good point. I should probably think <laughs> about that. <laughs> Have you ever tried this thing where you lick your fingers and stick them in the outlet? Like oh uh, yeah, I have. <laughs> right. See, there you go. Got to try it once. <laughs> um, any other questions? I think, I mean, nothing I can think of right now. So, okay. You ready? You got some over unders, Andy? I do. We have three things today and you just let me know if you think they're overrated, underrated or properly rated. Number one, eclipses. I slept through the last one. Uh, at a festival and everyone's like did you see the eclipse and I was like uh, I slept through it uh, I missed it uh, best sleep you ever had I think yeah they're pretty overrated it was cool there's a welding shop next to me and uh, the guys in the, were holding up their masks and you know I got to see it um, it, was, it was pretty cool but uh, my head main printer's car did burn down Right. so I'm going to go overrated you Ellen? looking for my answer next? I'm looking for your answer, yeah. I love the magic of nature and the mystic of it all. And I mm-hmm. love that it's, there's a lot of shit we don't know. And I'm not saying the eclipse had anything to do with anything, but it's fucking crazy. Like, it's still cool. Like, the yeah. moon perfectly lines up with the sun and fucking darkens the earth. Like, you think you, you can't walk outside and just look at it and be like, wow, that's magical and crazy and glad i got to see it instead you're like nah fuck that that's stupid <laughs> did, did you guys get a really good view of the eclipse none zero <laughs> couldn't even tell what the sun was yeah i drove to rochester to see it and it was just all clouds oh bummer. So, so um so here's the thing i think that you're right it's magical and it is beautiful but so is a mountain like so is you know yeah but i could sun. walk outside and see a mountain hold, hold, any day hold, hold of the on. week hold on so is the sunrise so is the sunset all these things are great and it's just an eclipse and the moon's daily fake occurrences anyway. the moon's this fake is anyway, like once right? every hundred so, years so uh no 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 not every hundred years the, the next one's in, in like, my location the so, next one's like portugal or something so i just think it is crazy overrated and overhyped and i don't know yeah. um I do understand and I'm not hating on anyone who likes it. Like you get to go, you like you do you like, if that's what you want to go do. I know somebody that drove, um, totality, uh, was about two hours from here, a two hour drive South. 
And in fact, Kyle drove two hours south and then that was fine to drive down there because everybody's kind of going at different times. But when the eclipse happened, when it was done, everybody was coming home and he was in traffic for six hours just getting home. So everybody's coming back at the same time. And so it kind of took the fun out of it, I would say. Um, So I think they are totality overrated you uh-huh. fucking cheesy son of a bitch <laughs> <laughs> number number two shop plants oh 100 oh. underrated so downstairs in production i have tons of fake ones and then upstairs in the office i have massive house plants or shop plants you got some right behind you now yeah, this is my this is where I live actually. I felt like if I was at the shop, I get distracted pretty easily. Um, and it's darker in the morning time. So I figured this had some good light. That's cool. So but, you live above where you work? No. So this is actually my my where I live is three blocks away from my shop. Oh, okay. So I'm like super close, but the upstairs is like the office. Mm. And actually we got a tattoo, a secret tattoo shop in the back or upstairs in the back. It's just you in a closet with a tattoo gun. <laughs> and, uh, I rent it out to my buddy that does tattoos up there. Nice. Um, yeah. So I have some like legendary old, like seven year old plants that are like 10 feet high in there. So it's awesome. I do. Well, we have a mix plants. too. So we have, because there's some rooms with no sunlight, the plant would die. Right. So we have a mix of fake and real. And today, just today, we got, it's fully spring here. And so we got some geraniums for out front. Like when, before you even come in our shop, there's these two giant planters and we, uh, we put geraniums in there and it just, you know what, right before you walk in Shirk Kong, you get, you know, a little bit of uh, magic, we'll call it a little magic mm-hmm. um, right there. They smell good. They look good. And it says, uh, we mean business. I think. Almost all of us, I feel like at the shop are into plants and we've been mm-hmm. getting different kinds and, replanting and repotting and whatever and there's this one big wall in the office that's all white that we were literally in talks of like getting custom planters made where we could attach them to the entire wall like actual plants where we would actually Mm -hmm. have to put in some kind of water system and lighting um but i don't know it's cool it's fun it's it's a slow burn but it's nice to see them grow and turn into something we have one of those um fly trap ones Oh, yeah. I had my office and then Brian kind of took it over because he has like a grow light in his office and uh, he kind of brought it back to life. But he found he claims he found a dead or recently died ant at his house and he brought it in in a baggie and then he (laughs) caught it in half and like fed the plant the ant has so that we could see how much like the plant would grow with like real insect nutrients. So I'm going to say underrated. Yeah, I love, I have plants everywhere. I got two palm trees in front of the shop. Uh, I got, uh, there's a bird of paradise. There's cactus. We got poppies, sunflowers. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Number three. So while I was in Sundance, uh, we had to choose from an activity. And so you listed like your top three activities and I got my third choice, but turned out to be pretty cool. Um, I got to make a bracelet. So there it is. My creation. Nice. And so there was like... Was there just was like just, cases of beads? Yep. So there's beads, millions of them in front of you. And they give you this, you know, string. And then you just... Well, first you started to just line them up in a tray, how you kind of want it to look like. And then you put them on the string. And so it, what was interesting was that... You know, they were dealing with all these screen printers. Like, so you would have a session, you'd have 30 minute session and they were, you were dealing with all these like creatives or these artists or screen printers or whatever. And so everybody was taking longer because they're like, oh, you know, like I want, it has to look perfect or whatever, or it has to look good. There you go. You, they're getting perfect, getting the right, uh, way of great or whatever the saying is, or good. Get in the way of great, but we're going to have to look you know, this up. <laughs> I know. We all have the internet. We're just like, I don't fucking know what it is. <laughs> just make well, it people up. know what we mean. They know, they know if yeah. you've heard it, um, please comment like on YouTube. Fumble. Yeah. Like look at it. Uh, please comment. Tell us what it is. We don't know. We don't know what we're talking about, but anyway, 
jewelry making or bead making, I guess, is what this what this was. It got me out of like my normal creativity, the normal things that I do, mm -hmm. and it just something completely different. And it was it was fun. So I think it was underrated. Anyway, what do you guys? What do you? What's your take on it? On I'm making. I'm making yeah. bracelets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dylan, you want to go? He's like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> no, no. I'm like, you should come to California. That's all people do here is they make little yeah. bracelets. <laughs> I I can't say that I've ever made. Well, that's a lie, actually. Well, let's go back to high school again with the uh, thermals and the t-shirts. I used to wear those hemp woven. Oh yeah, like bracelets. I have one right now. Joanne makes these right there yeah that exactly i i would wear one right now if someone would make me one someone make me one and send me one i would totally wear it um not like a big fat gross one either i'm not like a <laughs> puga shell necklace person like andy um <laughs> but my daughter is really into it and i made a rule with her a i don't know a couple years ago now that if she made me a bracelet i would wear it till it fell off like i would wear it mm. until yep it basically did crumbled and fell off well, the very first bracelet she made me was just a pipe cleaner it was like a green pipe cleaner and she's like i made this for you i was like all right cool put it on twisted it on my wrist it was on there for two years <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome but i got so many cuts from that thing because it was just metal wire twisted together that if i ran my wrist against somebody else's arm or my own leg or arm it would slice me open but yeah. I told her, I was like, it's one of those things, like after a week or two, you're like, well, fuck it. Now I want to see how long this thing lasts. It lasted right. two years before it fell off. Um, I was thinking about starting to learn how to crochet beanies and giving beanies to people because my head's kind of big and they're always too small. Same. And you can always, I think if you made someone a, a beanie, they'd be like forever grateful. And so that that would be my bracelet. You ever see those, the, I mean, this isn't my world, but you ever seen the people that make those where they have that little wheel thing that you like crank and it like makes the whole hat. Like yeah. Right yeah. There? You need one of those. Yeah. That would be, that would be awesome. Yeah. Get some thick, get their super thick yarn and just make mm -hmm. it huge. You know, who does that is Jessica from uh, Juan, you know, from uh, squeegee prints. She has, um, that's what she does all the time. I was going to say Ryan Moore's wife does those too. Oh, really? Mm hmm. I mean, I've been wanting to meet Juan and go check out his shop because I'm from San Diego, right where my parents' house is, right where it's just down the road from his house mm. or where his shop is. And um, Juan's great. I've been meaning to hit him up when I'm down there in San Diego. Um, I love his place. Good people. Sweet. Awesome. Well, nice. Drew, that, well, that's, that's it. it. That was all of my, oh, yeah, that's, I had three. And, it off. There it is, yeah. But Drew, thanks for coming on the show, man. It was good, good chatting with you. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Thanks, guys. Can I can I give a little shout out to Francisco and Thomas real quick? Oh hell yeah! Uh, shout out Francisco, Thomas, and <laughs> the, car, uh, the car burning maniac. Yep, yeah, exactly. Um, well, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, dude. Hope we get to hang sometime. Yep, sounds good. Later, dude. Later.